any words for what I just witnessed. I'm in pain. Oh, okay. I'm in pain from all the trauma. If Yumi's body, discovered in the nurse's office. Taka's body, discovered in the equipment room. I witnessed two- I was witness to two nightmares, one after the other. One right after the other. No, they weren't nightmares. This is harsh reality. The true nightmare is this reality, the reality I have to face every day. But still. Oh, did she pass out? Why is this happening? Is she okay? T Toko? Don't tell me, it's Toko too! <laughs> Relax, she's just passed out when she saw the blood. The blood? Oh, that's right. When Toko is, um, Toko, she has a fear of blood, right? Uh, we tried everything to get her to wake up, but no luck. Just leave her be for now. It's like he said, I should just leave her alone for now. I was about to say. Are we supposed to, like, look at it? Like, Taka. Why did this happen? Why did this happen? Oh my god. Another hammer. Now it has. Now it's Justice Hammer 4, and it's even bigger than before. Is that suspicious individual responsible for killing Taka too? So it's either Hero or Celeste. Because I was suspecting Celeste for Hifumi. I don't know why Celeste would kill Taka though. But I don't feel like Hero has an alibi for either of them. However. But why is it Justice Hammer 4? Huh? What do you mean? Hmm. Celeste was attacked with Justice Hammer 1. Then Hifumi was hit with Justice Hammer 2. But this time it was Justice Hammer 4. What happened to number 3? Ah! Uh, what? What's the matter? Well, you mentioned Justice Hammer 3, you just reminded me. What? Out with it. Do you know something? Actually, Taka's not the only one that's been killed. Hifumi's dead too. What? Hey! Hifumi's been killed. Yeah. I see. Which is why you came to get us. Then we'd better go check it out. Dead. Of course, come on. So Sakura, by, by, by Ako, no, and Daddy Longlegs and I rushed out of the physics lab. But as soon as we were out of the physics lab, ah, oh. oh. Celeste, aren't you supposed to be waiting for us in the nurse's office? <laughs> Something has come up. <laughs> yeah, I heard. Fumi is dead, right? Indeed. Well, that is not all. It is gone. Huh? What's gone? It has disappeared. Disappeared? <laughs> Fumi's body has disappeared. What? What, what are you, you talking about? It's disappeared. Don't be ridiculous. Come on. Are you serious? What? What the heck is happening here? Hey. Everyone, back to the nurse's office. No, then Taka's body's gonna disappear. I practically leapt down the stairs, nearly losing my balance. I reached the nurse's, nurse's office, completely out of breath. This is so bad. This is so bad. I couldn't believe my eyes. Hifumi's body, there that was there just a few minutes earlier. It just disappeared. Me and Celeste went to the bathroom, but we were only gone for like a minute. And then when we got back, Indeed. this must have been the work of the culprit. They must have come back and carried the body away. We must really be enjoying this. Enjoying the sight of us standing around frightened and confused. Oh, we're all going to die here. We're going to die just like those guys died. What, what I don't you believe say? this. I don't believe a body would just disappear. Why? First there were two murders, and now one of the bodies has been taken. This is unnatural. Huh? Hold on. What do you mean two murders? Ina. Talk has been killed. We found him in the equipment room. No way. It can't be. Talk it too. It can't be. It can't be. No. Hina. Calm down. We're all gonna die. All of us. They're gonna kill all of us. <laughs> Then who might be the next tar- Then who might the next target be? Togo? Huh? What? I completely forgot! She's still unconscious in the equipment room! You left her at the scene of the crime! We didn't have a choice. She passed out and refused to wake up. Huh? So she is still unconscious. Yeah. Wait, so you knew she was still up there and said Nothing? Why? <laughs> that annoying little insect that clings to you wherever I go. We'd be better off without her. Bastard! 
Calm down. You forgot about her, didn't you? You have no right to blame me. Everyone, stop fighting. Right now, we need to hurry back. I can't take this anymore. I don't want anyone else to die. Damn. Bye, Aqua. I don't know. Bye. If someone's hap something's happened to Toko, I'll never forgive you. <laughs> hmm. We shot out of the nurse's office and bolted up the stairs. Heading back to the third floor. We ran back into the equipment room at full speed, and when we got there... Toko. Thank God you're okay. But right away I noticed there was something very different here. It was gone. Taka's body, which should have been right there, had disappeared. Where is Hiro? I'd love to end. Don't tell me he did this. This, this, is... can't, this can't be happening. Uh... Are we all hallucinating all this or something? No, it's not a hallucination. I know I saw it before. And what I've seen now isn't what I saw before. Huh? What are you saying? Taka disappeared too? Stop talking. Stop saying disappeared. It didn't just vanish into thin air. Obviously whoever did this has hidden the body. But why would they do that? <laughs> I couldn't possibly begin to imagine. <laughs> anyway, our costume suspect is clearly continuing his crime spree. We gotta hurry up and catch him before he kills all of us. Not possible. Oh, I do not think you have to worry huh? about that. <laughs> think about it. Who could possibly be responsible for killing and hiding these dead bodies? No. Um, hmm. when Hifumi's death cry went up, everyone here was on the, together on the third floor. It is so. After that, we split into two groups. <laughs> and now this time you all came here as a group from the nurse's office? In other words, the only one... Oh, the only ones who could have done this are Hiro and Kyoko, who are still missing. Hold on a second. Kyoko has an alibi for when Celeste and Hifumi were attacked. There's no question that she was in the dining hall with us. <laughs> you seem very adamant about defending her. Perhaps you are in love. That's not it at all. That's fine. Well, anyway, yes, I do accept Kyoko's alibi. Let's see. Which means the suspicious individual we're looking for can be none other than Hiro. <laughs> Which further means there will be no more murders. The regulations are very clear about that. Oh, that's right. There's a rule that says you can only kill a maximum of two people. That's right. As long as the rule's in place, there will not be a third murder. If they were to break that rule... Shing! I'm Mincia! Mincia without a second thought! Mincia grind and turn you into paste! By the way, did you know that fish face can also refer to shellfish, like shrimp or crabs? <laughs> Indeed. Let's see... So since two people have been killed, there is no possibility of any more. Perhaps... You knew that from the beginning, didn't you? By Akawa. I don't know. Which means you knew Toko was never in danger. <laughs> I still meant it when I said we'd be better off without her, though. In other words... Anyway, with that in mind, we can now relax and search for the two missing bodies. The two missing bodies. Two people have been killed and their bodies have been hidden. The only one without an alibi who could have done it is Hiro. But is he really the killer? And what about Kyoko? If she's not involved in this case, where did she go? What? Hey, Makoto, what's the matter? Huh? Oh, it's- no, it's nothing. Hmm. Whatever. We need to find those bodies or our little narrative here can't move forward. So then... Very well. Then let us split up and begin searching. But... <laughs> there is no need to be afraid. No more mergers will take place during this case. Cause, I mean... I mean, I know that, but I think I do, but... Yeah. If you're still nervous, I'll come with you. Huh? Okay, thank you. Hmm. No need to thank me. <laughs> I love them. Stop. Then let's get moving. Yell out if you find anything. I have to try and find two missing bodies. Uh, okay. I don't know where to look. So I guess we look here. Hello. Huh? Where could, where could two dead bodies have disappeared to? Damn. We need to search for the bodies that have disappeared. What happens after that? Huh? The door must be locked. Why is the door locked? Why is the door locked? That is suspicious beyond words. Let's check the rec room, I guess. I guess nothing here. Let's get out of here, I guess. I don't know. Where to look? Ah. Oh. Oh. The classrooms? I really doubt they'd hide a body in a classroom, but you know. Uh, what the heck? <sighs> Makoto, 
Come on. Why are you just standing there? We need to get to the repository. Huh? You mean? Indeed. I found them. A few Mizen Taka's bodies have been hidden in the repository. Goodbye. I've already told Hina and Sakura. We'll go on ahead. Their bodies were in the repository. What is the repository? What's a repository? Is the the reposit in here? Oh, okay. It must be the locked room then, yeah? Yes. Are the bodies here somewhere? Hmm. I have to wonder where they could have been hidden. Up ahead is the repository. Okay. The doorknob turned. I guess it's unlocked. Then I have no choice but to go inside. So I opened the door, and when I entered, I saw... There cannot be another body. Oh. The two bodies that had disappeared were right there. The smell of blood made me gag. What I saw before my eyes was unquestionably, unavoidable, unwavering reality. And then I heard the announcement for a second time. Let me guess. A body has been discovered! After a certain amount of time, which you may use however you like, the class trial will begin! I'm not... I am nowhere. Hmm. And so here we are! Oh, no. Monokuma file. Let me give you all the next Monokuma file! I was gonna hand them out when you found the bodies the first time, but I thought something might happen. What? It was a really hard to resist, but turns out I was right. Stop talking. Just hand it over already. Punishment is waiting for you. Oh no. See ya later! Hmm. Well then, now that we've found the bodies, all that's left is to uncover the culprit. Hold on, how can you be so calm? I mean, they're dead, you know. That's terrible. Dead, gone forever, they're never coming back. Awful, this is just too awful. Hina suddenly burst into tears. She clutched at Fumi's lifeless body. Who, who, would, who would do, do this? Oh. Why? Why? Large, wet tears fell from her eyes. The tears landed on Hifumi's cheeks. If this were some world to make believe, that might have been when Hifumi opened his eyes, but this wasn't a movie. She's gonna kill herself. I am almost betting. <laughs> what the heck? This wasn't. She's alive again? Where am I? Cold. So cold. Is winter coming? No. Hifumi, wake up! Huh? Uh, that's right. I remember now. Hope's peak. Come on, you gotta wake up! I remember before I met you. I met you all. <laughs> His memories are all blended together. He has nothing useful to offer uh, us. The light, it's reaching out to me like the tail. Hey, Ifumi! Who was it? Who attacked you? Who tried to kill you? Who killed me? That's right. I remember their name. Y Yasu. Hero. Hero? His eyes closed, and then they never opened again. Death for the second time. Absolute, undeniable death. No matter how many more of Hina's tears splashed his face, there was no second miracle. Reality set in again. Hm. This isn't some stereotypical fantasy world. Tears can't restore a person's vitality. Honestly. You have no tears, do you? No blood in your veins, no calcium in your bones. At least you have your meat. Stop talking. You're just angry. Going out of his way to return just to leave us with those unnecessary dying words. Now this game has become exceedingly boring. <laughs> you said Yasuhiro, right? Then perhaps... Yasuhiro Hagakure. That is the only person he could have been referring to. So in other words... The case is solved. Assaulting people and even killing Taka and Hifumi, and then going as far to hide their bodies. A criminal that hides his face behind a mask and uses a bunch of giant wood wooden hammers. Is that what Hero ear what Hero is, is this? If it's true, I can't forgive him. No way! Can I ever forgive him? 
to kill two of our friends. That's fine. Anyway, it's about time. We track down the culprit in our little life or death game here. Gosh. Although this is not, it's not all that life or death. The trial will conclude without much trouble. Indeed. Yes, it does look that way. It's going to begin again. We have to go through this one more time. I have to accept it. I have no choice but to go through with this to make sure everyone survives. I just have to do it. First, I'd better check the Monokuma file. The victims were Hifumi Yamada and Kyoko Taka. Kyo Ta Kiyo Taka. I don't know. Ishimaru. The cause of death for each body was a blow to the head. It is the. It is thought that they were both killed with a similar weapon. That's it. Very strange. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty strange. We got way less information than this time than before. <sighs> That is no problem, after all. The events of this case unfolded before our very eyes. We should know more about what happened than the Mamakuma file could anyway. Hmm. Maybe. Well. There's something else that's bothering me. Hmm. Someone else has been missing for quite a while. Are you talking about Kyoko? Perhaps. Without a doubt, she has an alibi for when Celeste and Hifumi were attacked. But what if the killer wasn't acting alone? What if they had an accomplice? An accomplice? <laughs> an accomplice? <sighs> what are you doing here? Monokuma! Don't be rude, I'm here to answer your question. What question? Yep. You're talking about accomplices, right? I'm pretty sure I explained it before, didn't I, during the first class trial? I remember. Speaking of which, I'd, I'd like to ask the bear, if there is an accomplice, do they also become blackened? So you ask, and so I shall answer. Each murder is allowed to have an accomplice, but only the one who does the killing will get to graduate. So in other words, two people can work together, but one of them has no chance of profiting from it. Then there's no way anyone would work together, right? Mondo. Mondo. In other words. So basically, you can be an accomplice if you want, but there's no gratification in it. So then. So are you saying nobody worked together this time either? Hey, um... Sorry, can't answer that. It would obstruct the free exchange of information between you guys. I just want to make sure you forget, no matter how much you might insist on the murder. Only one black and can graduate, and the accomplice gets nothing. So in other words... Then we only need to figure out the one black and just did the killing, right? Just like normal? Well... Okay, okay, let me take this whole opportunity to clarify the whole shebang. In this last trial, what you need to determine is... Extreme! The one true black and who devised the murder plot and put it into action. The true black and, so just one person? Well, man. That's enough for explainifying. Uh, now it's down to the final battle between all of you. And the Blackened, good luck to all the contestants. So there can only be one Blackened, and Accomplice wouldn't benefit. Then I can't see any way Kyoko would be connected to this case after all. You may be right. Um... If that's true, then Kyoko, where are you? However... As long as she's not connected to the case, it doesn't matter. Let's get back to the investigation. Mm -hmm. I have absolutely no doubt that Hiro is responsible. Okay, uh, Celeste? You're on my suspect list. So is Hiro. Kyoko is, I'm not even suspecting my girl. She is an icon. Love Kyoko, she's amazing. So, uh, the time being, I suppose it can't hurt to pursue, pursue, pursue further information. You little sus. So, um, you know, don't you think we should consider a certain someone a suspect just in case? I'm talking about the murderous fiend, Genocide Jack. What? I'm offended. Oh. You, when did you? <laughs> I've been looking all over you, master. When I woke up, you were nowhere to be found. You SOB! You, anyway, you better milk slack, swimmer girl. Huh? Milk sack? You gotta be kidding. Why do I gotta be a suspect? What the heck? Well, I mean, you are a serial killer. <laughs> so what? I'm like a special guest suspect every time. I have an alibi, you know. <laughs> She's right about that. When we heard Fumi scream, she was with me. And when the bodies disappeared, she was still lying unconscious in the equipment room. Plus, Taka's body aside, I can't imagine. Anyway, she would have been able to move at Fumi's body. Yep. Besides, I calculate every move I make. I'm not gonna kill someone when everyone knows what I look like. <laughs> they don't call me the murderous fiend for nothing. What are you saying? That's not the kind of thing you should be bragging about. Let's see. On another topic, we should... We should post a guard by the bodies like before. We can't have them disappearing again. So then. He you know, and I can handle that. You don't mind, do you, you know? Mm. Sure. I'd be totally useless on this investigation anyway. It's all clear. I'm totally betting she's gonna kill herself because unless she survives, I don't know, because she's doesn't help with any investigation. She literally 
I love her. Don't get me wrong. She doesn't add much to the storyline except for being like the scared, like depression. Which okay, this sounds really awful. I actually love Hina as a character. She is really cool though. I love her dynamic with Sakura. And this whole thing is strange. All but one of us has an alibi. So figuring out who did it should be obvious, right? It's never obvious in this game. But maybe it's just me. But I don't think it's going to be as straightforward as it seems. Yes, ma'am. It's Monokuma File 3. There are hammers of all different sizes hanging on the wall. Although some are more than, like, mallets. Mallets. Could the Justice Hammers have been designed using these as a model? Either way, all the hammers have obviously seen a lot of use. They're all covered in debris and chalky stone powder. Wait. For some reason, this one hammer isn't dirty at all, and it's wet. Did someone wash it recently? Spotless hammer. Um, let's look at the bodies, I guess. Taka, he'll never move again. According to the Monokuma file, Taka died from a blow to the head. We found Justice Hammer 4 near his body in the equipment room. Is that what he was used to kill him? And there's a tarp laid out under his body. Did the killer use this to move Taka's body? That way, there would be no blood left behind while the body was moved. Blue tarp has been added to the truth bullets. I'll be right back. Okay. Ah. We back, we back. Um, I suppose we talk to them. There are many aspects to this incident this time. Too many, to be honest. Considering that, it may be good to look back on everything that's happened. So then. Would you like my help? Yes. Yeah, let's look back on things. Mm. This morning, only four of us met up at the dining hall. Hina, Kyoko, you, and myself. We waited for the others, but nobody showed up, so we decided to go look for them. It was around 8 o'clock when we began our search, and soon after we split up, Kyoko disappeared. After that, Hina found Celeste in the rec room on the third floor, then quickly came and got you and me. According to Celeste, she was attacked by a suspicious individual and lay unconscious for about an hour. Oh, I kept using Sakura's voice even though it's Makoto. Whoops. In other words, she was attacked an hour before we found her, meaning just after 7 o'clock. Based on the picture Celeste took, we discovered her attacker was dressed in a strange costume. It was Robo-Justice. It also became clear that this Robo-Justice had dragged Hifumi away. After meeting up with Tokum Byakua, we began searching for our costumed assailant. We found an injured Hifumi in the library on the second floor. We took him down to the nurse's office on the first floor, then resumed our search. So the rec room, the library, and the nurse's office. But non not long after leaving the nurse's office. What's wrong? I saw a shadow. Something moved moving around at the top of the stairs. Based on Celeste's claims, we went back up to the second floor, where we split up and began searching. Then right after that, Celeste screamed. This time, she had ha apparently seen the suspect on the third floor. Hearing her screams, we quickly made our way to the third floor. Celeste, what's wrong? That was a rather intense scream for someone like you. I saw him, the strange costumed man. He ran off as soon as I screamed. I can't do her voice anymore, bye. I was blocking the stairs. Stairs, stairs, I keep doing that with this line. So he headed further down into the hallway and disappeared. And then, huh? What was that? That came from downstairs. It must have been. If you me, he's in the nurse's office. So did she? If I suspect her and Hero, I don't feel like Hero. I don't know. I just feel like she's so guilty, and she can't. She has a poker face, right? I want to suspect her so bad. I want to. This is bad. Come on, we have to go back. Oh, whoops. At that point, we decided to split up into two groups. Celeste, Hina, and I went back to the nurse's office. Meanwhile, you, Byakua, and Toko pursued the suspect on the third floor. And when we got back to the nurse's office, we found a Fumi's corpse, which is also when we heard the body discovery announcement play. I left Celeste and Hina alone and headed back to the third floor to tell the others what happened. However, but at the same time, we had discovered Taka's body in the equipment room, which means Hifumi and Taka's bodies were discovered right around the same time. Because I remember hearing the body, di body discovery announcement play right after finding Taka. And that's when I showed up and told you and 
Byakuwa that Hifumi Hifu had been killed, right? Then you, me, and Byakuwa all headed back to the nurse's office, leaving behind Toga, who had fainted. But as soon as we left the physics lab, we ran into Celeste, who had just arrived to tell us something very unusual. Hifumi's body has... Body. Body has disappeared. I am not even listening to her accent. We hurried back to the nurse's office to discover that his corpse was in fact gone. Then we remembered we had abandoned the unconscious Toko and rushed back to the equipment room. This can't be happening. Are we all hallucinating this or something? I, I must have been hallucinating or some. This time, Toko's body had disappeared. So from there, we began our search for both of the missing bodies. And after some time, Celeste told us she found the bodies and we all headed to the repository. And there we discovered the two bodies that had apparently vanished. Bodies. Why do I say it like that? And that brings us up to now. However, Looking back, things have certainly been active. If you want to look back at the case again, just let me know. I'm fine anytime. So, um, hey, I'm Makoto. I've been thinking about something. It's about the repository. Huh, what is it? Hmm. After Hifumi and Taki's... Taki's... Bodies disappeared. We split up to look around, right? I was really scared, so me and Sakura just stuck together. Hi. And we came right to the repository to, you know, look around. But when we got here, the repository was locked. We couldn't get inside. It was locked? I know, it was locked. I checked too. And we came here as soon as the search started, so there's no way someone could have beat us here. So if that's true, then who locked it? And why is it unlocked now? I wonder the same thing. The door was locked when the search for the bodies began, but now it's wide open. But I'll probably have to leave the area to figure out what it is. If Yumi's big, cold, dead body is laying on the floor, his really big body. I mean, how on earth was the killer able to move someone so big? From the nurse's office where his body, where he was discovered to hear the repository, all the way from the first floor to the third and all without anyone noticing. How the heck? It's no good, I just don't get it. I can think about it later. I remember his fatal injury was a also a blow to the head. Probably from Justice Hammer 3, which was laying on the floor in the nurse's office. Huh, wait. Something's off about his body. Why am I getting this feeling? Something's different. Something about Hifumi's body in the nurse's office versus his body right now. That's it, his glasses. When his body was in the nurse's office, his glasses were covered in blood. But now they're completely clean. Does that mean someone wiped his glasses off? But who would do that and why? What the heck? I don't know. Is it a- is it a man? No, I don't know. Byakua. Byakua. Uh, no, Daddy Long Legs. Do you think Hiro really did it? Hmm. I don't see how anyone could think otherwise. When the attacks and murders and disappearances all happened, every one of us had an alibi. And the last thing Hifumi said when he died. Yeah, he said Hiro's name. So in other words... Then there is no room to suspect anyone else. Okay, but if he did do it, then why would he hide his identity with that weird costume? Hmm. Maybe he thought no matter what happened, he'd be safe as long as his face was covered. Because he's the fool of the century, you see. I mean, he is kind of dumb. But do you really think he's, that's enough to explain it? I feel like there's a clue hiding in there somewhere. What? And is that it? That's all that bothers you about this case? Well, no, there's a few other things. Like, why did the killer try to hide the bodies? Hmm. He probably figured that if we couldn't find them, the bodies... Find the bodies, we couldn't complete our investigation. But if that's the case, we found the bodies pretty easily, didn't we? <laughs> Again, it comes back to the fact that the culprit was a moron. Is that really all there is to it? The other thing that bothers me is, why'd they bother killing two people? What? Because the, all the rule says if you can kill someone and get away with it, you graduate, right? So if you're the killer, your number one priority is not getting caught. But killing two people means more clues, more chances, you'll get found. I see. Hold on, perhaps. I see, so that's what that means. I is everything okay? That's enough. Don't talk to me as if we're friends. Huh? What's with the attitude? <laughs> but you have my appreciation. Goodbye. Thanks to you. I might have some fun with this after all. Maybe two people did it. Because somebody forgot about the rule. His mysterious words hung in the air as he left the repository. He talked as if he'd figured out something. But if he did, would it have killed him to tell me what it was? Um... Through this door that Hina said was locked before. There's definitely a lock on the outside, but it can only be locked from the inside of the repository. I don't see any way to lock it in the art room. Hmm. The door can be locked from the inside of the repository, which makes me wonder. Hina and Sakura have confirmed that the door was locked after we started looking for the missing bodies. The killer was in the room with them. 
and lock themselves in there with it. Right? Unless it's, unless if Yumi's really alive and he did this. Hina and Sakura confirmed that the door was locked after we started looking for the missing bodies. And the door is designed so that it can only be locked from inside the repository. In other words, when Hina checked it out, someone had already gone in the repository and locked the door. When they were done, they unlocked it and left, which is why it's unlocked now. But Hina claims that there's no way someone could have b beaten them to the repository. So that certain someone is who? Who could have beaten them? I should look around more? Okay. Oh, 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 oh. Yes, I should. It's a dolly. It doesn't have a handle. I saw this in the art room before. I guess it's used it's to move statues around. It's kind of awkward, but if you've been down, it's not too hard to use. Huh? But wait. Wasn't this in the equipment room when we found Taka's body? And look at the wheel. There's a blood stain on it. So there's blood on the wheel of a dolly that has been moved from the equipment room to the repository. What's the explanation for that? Hmm, there's gotta be a clue around here somewhere. Maybe I should check somewhere else. There are places I already know about. In the equipment room. Uh. Okay, I guess let's go. Let's go to the, um, the one room that's back here. And then next episode, we'll investigate everything else and then maybe go to class trial the next episode. Already planning ahead. Oh, hello. All right, eh? Hey, Toko. Let's check this out. There's some kind of tire marking going through the pool of blood in the middle of the room. That reminds me about the dolly in the repository. There was blood on its tire. Could that blood have come from here? Which could mean that Taka's body was moved from the equipment room to the repository using the dolly. Both rooms are on the third floor, so that should have definitely, that c should definitely have been possible. But even if the dolly was used to move Taka's body, what about Hifumi? Hifumi's body was in the nurse's office on the first floor. Even with the dolly, there's no way to get it up to the third floor. That's still a total mystery. I'll check in a minute. Justice hero number four. The body was moved, but the murder weapon was just left here. Um. Huh, this tarp. I feel like I've seen it somewhere before, and just recently too. It was underneath him. I know, I've... I was sleeping right here when the killer carried the body away. I'm super pissed I missed such an ultimately rare event. I guess that's cool beans. Who could have done it though? I have, I'm literally lost. It's gonna be somebody we don't think it is. That's how it always is, isn't it? You know what? I lied. We're gonna go downstairs and check the nurse's office. Uh. Okay. Alrighty, let's check. Oh, I was supposed to check the rec room on the third floor. Crap! I'm gonna go check that real quick. Shame on me. Well, let's just do our little dancey dance to get upstairs. Mm, right here. Right here. Okay. Um, hello. Let's check the... There's a copy of Othello here. It's not really related to the case, though. Oh, okay. I just didn't know. A pool table. It's not really related to the case, though. But I got money. The um Celeste. She was really attacked with this. The Justice Hammer number one. But what the heck is with this thing? Uh let's see, the chair. Uh a couch. There's nothing really I need to worry about. Uh it's a shelf full of magazines. I'm just making sure that I'm not gonna miss anything. A dartboard, it's not really really just the case though. I got money! Money is money. Okay, let's leave. Okay. 
you know what? Next episode, we will, we will, um, go to, well, go to the nurse's office, I guess. That shouldn't be too hard to do. All right. I'll see you guys then.